Hi, this is Greg Benz with a quick preview of the new FaceAware Liquify tool in Photoshop CC 2015.5, which was just released today. So just like we've always done in the past, we want to go to Filter Liquify for the new FaceAware Liquify. But the first thing I want to do is actually convert my image to a smart filter. And that's just going to allow me to undo any changes I make later, makes the tool a lot more flexible. So now I'm going to go back to Filter Liquify. And you can see already that Photoshop has detected two faces in the image. If you need to activate this feature, if it doesn't automatically pop up, just look for this face icon here for the face tool to turn it on. And Photoshop will automatically look for faces in the image. And I find that it does an incredibly good job of detecting faces. I've had wedding images with 10 different faces, and it seems to work really well. With only a few exceptions, uh, if a face is obscured by another face, it'll be uh, challenging extreme backlighting or other really tough lighting conditions can can throw it a little bit or out of focus elements if someone's really in the background and one quirky little thing is sometimes a tilted face may not be detected this is working here but at an extreme angle it may not work and I'll show you how to deal with that a little bit later but overall it does a really commendable job of any face where you can see both eyes looking at the camera here uh, on even pretty good angles as long as you can see two eyes it, it does a really nice job and what's amazing about this feature as I just sort of zoom in is you can adjust in a couple different ways that are just very intuitive if I want to change the uh, let's say I want to change the nose width here I just click and drag on this control point and I can start adjusting the nose and you notice as I do this the facial hair looks absolutely realistic it's being scaled in a very natural way the lines and contours of the face, the skin pores, things look really nice. I would personally struggle to do this with the traditional liquify tools, but even if you are a master of the old liquify tool in Photoshop, I think you're gonna find that this is a really quick way to do adjustments and just speed up your workflow. And certainly for more novice users, it's gonna really open up new possibilities. I'm gonna zoom back just a little bit here so we can see more of the face and just kind of walk around and see some of the different changes we can make. So you'll notice on the right hand side here all these various options under FaceWear Liquify. And as I adjust the nose here, we can see that the nose width slider is changing. So if I just simply change the nose width slider, we can interactively change the slider on the right. Or if we make a change on the nose here, as soon as we let go, the value will be adjusted on the right. So these are completely synced up for whichever face is active. So he must be face two. And for that reason, uh, we could swap over to face one to get her and start changing things. Um, but what I find is a lot easier is just simply grabbing these points and adjusting them because if I do that, Photoshop's automatically gonna switch between faces. I don't have to drop down and choose a face here. It will automatically do that for me. So if I have a lot of people, that's the easiest way to do things and just look for these different control points, whether I wanna make the eyes wider, make the eyes taller, make them bigger, change the eye height. There's all sorts of different control here can change the width of the face to slenderize it, fatten it up if I wanted to, can make the overall face taller, a little bit shorter, change that chin height, you know, get a nice crisp jawline if I bring this in. You can change the hairline if you want to have a little bit less, if someone had a receding hairline that can be really nice, or to open it up for various reasons, maybe to balance out. Uh, you can adjust the overall width of the mouth. You can go and change the angle to make someone smile more or less. So a really stunning level of control that Adobe has built into this. I'm just absolutely floored by how well it works. And like I said, it's not perfect. I'm sure it'll continue to get better, but it is just absolutely incredibly easy to use. And I find um, just produces some very photorealistic results. So let's look at a couple of little things you may wanna know in terms of how to work with this. And that would be one, if you wanna make asymmetric adjustments to the eyes, notice that they're both adjusting. No matter which one I adjust, both eyes are going to be changed here. And there are no independent options for the eyes. So if you have a subject whose left or right eye are different sizes, go ahead and adjust the smaller eye or the bigger eye, whatever you need to do. Say, okay. And because we're working on a smart object, we have the smart filters mask and we can simply mask things out. So I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna hit B for my brush tool. I've already got black paint and I can paint right over the eye here. So I'm 
essentially undoing the change by blacking out that part of the, the mask. If I alt click the mask, we can see I've blacked out that part of the mask, effectively turning that off. So if I look at liquify being off and on, here's our original, here's our changes, and we can see that by using that mask, I've protected that eye. So it's a very easy way if you need to make asymmetric adjustments to the eyes, just use that mask. The other thing I mentioned is that faces that have an extreme tilt may not be found with this tool. And I'll show you an example of that. So we saw that both faces were detected. If I rotate this far enough, at some point it's going to fail. And notice there in the before and after, it looked like his face may have changed a little bit different than hers. And that's kind of a telltale here because of the smart object, the way it works. So if we go to filter, liquify, we can see, yep, it's only detecting his face. And so what happened is he's now face one and it just kind of reset things. So unfortunately, if you have an image where someone's head is tilted quite a bit to the side, you might find it's not detected here in this new tool. And I'm sure that Adobe will update this to address that at some point. But for now, there is a workaround and that would simply be, um, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna rasterize this layer. Uh, actually, yeah but you would, you would not want to work on a smart object for this workaround. You could make adjustments to this face, so you could essentially bring it back into the proper orientation. Get, get this person vertical. Go ahead, go make your adjustments here. So once we've gotten vertical, we can see both faces are detected. And then when you're done, simply rotate that face back to whatever orientation it needed to be and that would allow you to still use the uh, the face aware liquify even if it, the face wasn't detected due to tilt and that's just a workaround uh, it's not perfect but it will let you use this on more faces if you just happen to find that particular issue but like i said in general i find that it does a really phenomenal job of detecting faces and once it detects them the adjustments i find to be very natural and realistic for the majority of faces so that's Face Aware Liquify in Photoshop. I think Adobe has done an amazing job and I can't wait to see where they take this next. If you've enjoyed this demo, then please click thumbs up and the subscribe button to be notified of new tutorials that I release in the future. Thanks.